Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to start our first day of related rates, and we're going to find out why we practice implicit differentiation and the chain rule so much. In these problems, these are real-world applications. We're going to be looking at how variables are changing with respect to time or how variables are changing with respect to any other variable. This first statement, dy over dt, is a differential statement, and it's the derivative of y with respect to time, which means how is y changing with respect to time. This notation would be how is x changing with respect to time. Uh, this one would be how is volume changing with respect to time, or how is radius changing with respect to time. We're going to do a lot of practice with this, so let's just get after this. Suppose we have this equation, this quadratic. We want to find how y is changing with respect to time when x equals 4. This is a rate of change, or a derivative. It's our rate. And uh, we are given that dx dt is 4 when x equals 4. So let's, let me show you what we're going to be doing. We are going to be taking the derivative with respect to t of y equals 5x squared minus 6x plus 2. Now it's very important that you understand that t is our independent variable here. So when I take the derivative of any other variable that's not a t, I've got to follow it up with the chain rule. So let's see how that looks. The derivative of y is just 1 because it's y to the first. However, we have to follow that up with the derivative of y with respect to t. So the derivative of y is dy dt or y prime. On the other side, the derivative of 5x squared is 10x, but then we have to follow that up with multiplying by dx dt. Now, the derivative of negative 6x is negative 6, but we have to follow that up with times dx dt. And the derivative of 2, of course, is just 0. All right. Um, so let's see if we can plug and chug. And we are trying to find dy dt, and we have an equation for dy dt. We know that x is 4, and we know dx dt, dx dt is 2. So we're just going to plug this in. So the rate of change of y with respect to t is equal to 10 times x, and x was given to me as 4, times dx dt, which is given to me as 2, minus 6 times dx dt, which is 2. And if we get, we work through all this, 10 times 4 is 40, times 2 is 80, minus 12 is 68. Now what would that mean? That means that the rate of change of y, so out when x equals 4, y is changing big time with respect to time. It's going up 68 over 1, but you see this is a pretty, it's almost a quadratic with a, a large coefficient relatively in front of us. You know it's increasing. So that sort of makes sense. Now let's do some word problems. A pebble is dropped into a compound uh, pond, causing ripples in the shape of concentric circles. I like this picture. You drop a, pond, a pebble into a pond, and these little concentric circles, these little waves go out like this, these little ripples. And it's pretty cool to see. It's like my little picture in motion. It looks like a little bullseye. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing. Now you need to understand that when you see these words, constant rate increasing, this is a derivative statement. This tells you that the derivative of the radius with respect to time is one. This whole line right here lets me know that dr dt, how radius is changing or with, uh, with respect to time is equal to one and it t says it's increasing, so it's positive one. Sometimes we're going to have to pay attention to see if that's a negative or not. It says, when the radius is four feet, find the rate at which the area of the disturbed water is changing. So the area is changing. That means we are trying to find out what is dA dt. How is the area changing with respect to time? That's a question mark, by the way. When the radius is four feet. So what we need to do here is we have to come up with our own equation that relates the area to the radius of a circle. And you should know that that equation is A equals pi r squared. And I see that it says the radius is 4, but you may not plug that 4 feet in to a what's called a, uh, a variable that's changing. Now, if this variable was static or unchanging, then you could go ahead and plug the 4 in. But the radius is changing, and so is the area. We can see that here. This radius went from, from that value to that value to that value, and of course the area is changing as well. So we cannot freeze the picture 
until we have taken the derivative with respect to time. So you write your equation and the very next thing you do is you find the derivative with respect to time. So we're going to DDT this whole thing. I'm going to DDT this entire equation, A equals pi R squared. So let's go through this. What's the, and again, the independent variable is T. When I take the derivative of A, I get one, but then I must follow that up with the derivative of A with respect to time. That's the chain rule. Now the derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r because that pi is just a constant. It can sit there, so we bring the 2 down, but then we've got to follow that up with the chain rule times dr dt. That's a times dr dt. So let's see what we know. We know now that we've taken the derivative, we can freeze and solve. The radius is 4 feet, and the radius is changing at one feet per second. So my answer is 2 times pi times r. r is 4 feet and then r prime or dr dt is 1 foot per second. And so this works out to be 8 pi. When we multiply feet by feet we get feet squared or square feet per second. And that's my answer to that. Alright, last example. Water runs out of a conical tank at a constant rate of 2 cubic feet per minute. The water is leaving at a rate of 2 cubic feet per minute. That tells me that dv, dt, the change of volume with respect to time is negative 2 cubic feet per minute. I don't know if you can see up here, but that's a cubic feet per minute. The radius at the top of the tank is 5 feet, and the height of the tank is 10 feet. So I've got this little conical tank. That's a horrible picture, I'm sorry, but please bear with me. The radius is 5 when the height is 10. Now in a cone, in a circular cone, the... the um, ratio of the radius to the height will always be the same. So this tells me you, you need to get used to this with cones because when we come up with our formula we have too many variables in it. So I'm going to write this equation down. The radius to the height is 5 to 10. And if you cross multiply you get the radius is 5h over 10 or 1 half H. The radius is always one half the height. Get used to that with cones. All right, how fast is the water level sinking when the water is four feet deep? This means the height. We want to find out what is dH dt when h equals four. So let's come up with the formula that relates the radius, the height, and the volume of a cone. And that formula is one-third pi r squared h. Now when we do these problems, I want to get a better three there to make sure. Let's get that eraser right there. Yes, I want a better three. Thank you for your patience. Now what we want to do now is we're going to substitute. We only want to have one variable down here. Two variables can get pretty messy. I'm going to substitute one half h. Get used to this with, with cones. I'm going to substitute one half h in for the radius. So that means that volume equals one third pi. The radius is one half h or h over two squared times h which says that V equals one half squared, of course, is one fourth, and h squared is just h squared <laughs> times another h is h cubed, and we come up with this equation. Looks like pi over twelve h cubed. That is the volume formula when we have substituted in how the radius and height are related to each other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to DDT this equation. So let's scoot down here so I can have a little time. By the way, these are some formulas that you need to know. So when I, I've got V equals pi over 12 h cubed. 
So when I take the derivative with respect to time, I'm going to get, I'm going to scooch down here and extend this page just a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to scooch all the way down here. So the derivative with respect to time of v is dv dt. Now look at this. The pi over 12 is just a constant. It's going to sit there. And I'm going to bring the 3 down. And that's going to be 3 pi over 12 times h squared. But then I have to multiply that times dh dt. Because time is my independent variable. The derivative of h is dh dt. So let's look and see what they want here. Um, what do we know? We know what dv dt was. That was negative 2. Let me rewrite that. dv dt was negative 2 cubic feet. And I think that was per minute. And we also know that the height, or the h, was 4 when we freeze the picture. Again, you can't plug the 4 in until after you take the derivative because the height is, a, is changing. So dv dt, I'm going to plug and chug, is negative 2 cubic feet per minute is equal to, I'll simplify 3 pi over 12 to pi over 4. And h is 4 feet. And when I square 4 feet, I get 16 square feet. And then times dh dt, which is what I am looking for. I am looking for h prime, or how is the height changing with respect to time. So when I divide through here, when I, I'm going to divide both sides by basically, well, I guess I'll simplify this to a 4. That'll be easier. So I've got a 4 pi here. When I divide through by all of this to solve for dh dt, my square feet are going to divide into cubic feet and just leave me with feet per minute. So this looks messy. Let me rewrite this so I, I'll tell you what I have so far. I've got negative 2, and I'm going to leave my units off for now because it got a little messy, equals 4 pi times dh dt. So that I don't confuse you too much, I took the 4 into the 16, and, and that simplified to 4. Now I'm going to solve for dh dt by dividing both sides by 4 pi. Divide by 4 pi. And I get that dh dt is equal to negative pi is on bottom. Let's erase that. The pi is on bottom. What do we have on top? Looks like that's just going to be a 1 and then a 2 pi. And my units were going to be, I divided feet cubed by feet squared and I get feet per minute. So um, there you go. That's related rates, our first practice with that, and I will see you guys tomorrow.